sometimes as a detailer, it's about preservation, not restoration. Today's detail, we're gonna demonstrate that for you guys. We've got this gorgeous 1989 Ford F-150. Customer is wanting us to polish, apply a ceramic coating to the exterior, as well as do a basic interior. This is the, the truck of dreams, I'll be honest with you. I feel like every teenager of us is like, that's the car that I was wanted or that I had when I first got my license. But this truck is definitely running into some issues. Today, we're gonna take a look at some of the issues that you can have when working on older vehicles and how as detailers, sometimes we have to cross that bridge very carefully from restoration to preservation. So let's go ahead and get into it. So this is actually the Ford F-150 big block. This truck was extremely popular back in its day. In fact, every man in my neighborhood, either his dad or his granddad, had a version of this truck at one point in their lifetime, it seems. Now this truck is not without its issues. We have some clear coat failure on our metal tailgate. The customer has made some upgrades to it with an exhaust system as well as new wheels and tires. And he's looking for me to have realistic expectations with this. He doesn't want me to actually make it perfect. He likes the flaws. He thinks it adds character to it. This was actually the first vehicle that he ever owned when he was 16. He actually has his original truck picture on his front visor. So there's huge sentimental value with this detail. So for me, I wanna try to get this as good as I can for this customer. One of the things that the customer requested was that we do an engine bay detail. We're gonna be testing out Vexus from Vonix. This is actually brand new from them. This is a wheel and engine cleaner. One of the claims that this product has is that it is safe on sensitive metals and finishes, even aluminum wheels. We're gonna test that out in just a second. Now we have potentially 35 years worth of grease and grime that we need to clean with this product. And I'm not looking to have to pay for any sort of repair. So we're gonna very safely and gently agitate with our various wheel brushes to get in all of our nooks and crannies and pressure wash at a very safe distance. So for those of you that are just kind of doing a general engine bay maintenance detail, a product like this has worked really well. I can see it's removed all of the kind of film and grime on the engine our plastics actually have a little bit of like a hydrophobic nature to it because they're degreased i don't see any staining on our metal for those of you that are looking to clean engines and wheels grimy areas uh, i want to test this out to make sure we're not harming any of those surfaces we're going to blow out any excess water and then turn on the engine just to make sure we have no squeaky belts the heat will help dry it as well and it want the belts rotating. This is just an engine bay conserver. It's great for plastics. You basically spray and let this product air dry and this is what it looks like an hour later. Y'all want to talk about motor plast. Holy cow, this is the best these plastics have probably ever looked. This is what this product is made for. I haven't even touched this engine since I sprayed it with Motorplast. Holy crap, guys. That looks fantastic. Motorplast was made for classic engines. Yowzas. That is some high gloss right there. So needless to say, I was pretty impressed with what Motorplast was able to do on this engine. But now we're gonna test out Vexus on our aluminum polished wheels. This is by far one of the weirdest wheel cleaning mitts that I have found, but it works pretty well. Looks more like the thing than the stranger. I can just very quickly clean this entire surface. I'm just drying this off real quick because I wanna make sure that we didn't damage our wheel surfaces. I really am not looking to make more work for myself. That says to me that we are safe on our polished aluminum wheels. Had really nice thick foam from the sprayer, cleaned well, very pleasant scent. So for me, those are some of the things that I'm looking for, especially on a surface like this, where you do have to be careful with what chemicals you use. 
I'm not seeing any concerns, but obviously when you're working on aluminum or polished aluminum wheels, out of direct sunlight, spray a wheel. You don't want to make sure it's hot. There's certain precautions that you want to take when working on surfaces like this, but all in all, chemical cleaned well, wheels are great. The customer had actually just washed the vehicle like one or two days before he brought it to me. I could tell because there was fresh tire shine on his truck. For those customers that are watching, you don't need to wash your vehicle prior to bringing it to me. In fact, please don't put on fresh tire shine because it makes it harder for me to do my job. But we did a contact wash, a chemical decon, a clay towel treatment to remove any sort of bonding contaminants, a light rail dust that was on the paint. It was actually in pretty good condition, so we didn't have to go very heavy with this step. But we got everything cleaned, decontaminated, rinsed, dried off, and we're gonna go ahead and examine the paint to see what we're working with. Most trucks, you're going to see water spotting on this back glass, but we have about 35 years worth of water spots that we need to deal with. Some acids can damage glass, and so I used some acid-free water spot removers. It didn't make a dent, and so now we're actually having to compound them off with one of the most aggressive compounds that I have in my shop, as well as a purple wool pad. We made a dent. It's not 100% removed, but we definitely were able to remove some of the water spots with a heavy compound. But I know if I have this on my glass, more than likely I have this on my paint as well. And speaking of paint, these are some paint thickness readings from our roof with our next PTG digital paint thickness gauge. It actually is telling me this paint layer is dangerously thin. We need to proceed with caution. Unfortunately, there is a heavy amount of oxidation on this paint and we have ridiculously thin paint. I mean, this vehicle, it's 1989, folks. It's gonna, it's gonna be a little worn down, um, but unfortunately that means that we can't take heavy measures with correction to try to remove this essentially sunburnt, sun damaged, oxidated paint. The customer said in about 10 years, his plan is to respray the vehicle. My goal in this paint correction and coating is just to kind of give him more time, slow things down. He's not looking for paint perfection. We need to kind of stick with a hybrid polish and we're gonna test a new one out today. And it's this product right here. Um, spray polish from Pan the Organizer. It's his clean line. So we're gonna work with this polish more in the future. I wanted to test it out in this spot because I've heard pretty good things from other influencers on YouTube, um, but because this paint had so much oxidation to it, and because my thoughts were that it was harder paint, I didn't want to spend a lot of time doing a test spot and then another test spot and then another test spot. Each time you do a test spot, you're shaving off paint. I just kind of wanted to come in with the pad and the combo that I thought was gonna work, but come to find out that this polish, it did dry up on us pretty quickly on this single stage paint. I maybe had two passes before it dried up. Uh, and this blue pad was just too aggressive for this paint. I had to come behind with a white foam pad and Meguiar's 210 just to kind of finish down, put a little bit more oil into the paint. Um, you can see we removed quite a bit of the dead paint on our pad, but rather than do a two-step, have to follow up with 210, I ended up just going with a product that I've worked with a lot, knew what to expect with it. So we stepped it down with a yellow waffle pad and the DIY detail, their gold standard. It has enough polishing oils to really help replenish that dry paint, um, enough bite to cut through the oxidation, but it's not gonna be overly aggressive on this sensitive paint. Originally our paint was around 2.4 mils. The thickest that we had on the roof was like 3.2 so you can see we shaved off to about 0.2 mils just doing two quick passes. So because we are at like 2.2, 2.1 and I can actually see some areas where it just looks like we're very very thin on the paint like here uh, specifically. We're gonna just basically go for a quick zip on this paint. Hopefully we don't have this issue on the rest of the car, but as we proceed, we'll do paint measurement readings and kind of go from there. But we're definitely gonna need a pad washer to keep all of our pads clean. Uh, so that way we get all of that blue transfer paint off. We're gonna have that on our white trim as well. So this is going to be a little bit more of an involved polish whenever you're working with single stage paint. And for those that wanna do heavy correction and get it to showroom quality, just make sure you have enough paint. Some of you might say, you've got enough, just go a little bit, you know, a little bit heavier. 
If you wanna go a little bit heavier and run that risk, that's totally fine. Single stage paint does have the paint and the clear mixed together. So essentially, if we have like two mils of paint, it's not going to be the same type of readings as when we do our primer, our color, and then our clear. Because obviously when we're thinking about paint measurements with two stage clear coat, we've got kind of three layers of paint to go through. So whenever I think of, you know, safe protocols for paint measurements, you know, a mil, a mil, a mil. If we have three mils with our paint, I know I've got about a mil with that clear before we're running into our color and our primer <laughs> loosely. With single stage paint, because it's all mixed together, you're gonna essentially have paint die off over time. That's what it's going to be designed to do. And this is why a lot of our fathers and grandfathers would constantly go out and polish the vehicle because that was what you had to do. You had to abrade off the dead paint to reveal the beautiful paint underneath. But you only have so many times to do that before you run out of paint. It's kind of like sanding wood. You have a rough finish, you can go out and sand it, but eventually you're gonna sand and sand and sand, you're gonna run out of wood. This is nowhere near as thick as wood. We're like sticky note thin. And those polishes, they're not super aggressive. That's why we wanted more polishes versus compounds for single stage paint because it's gonna put oil back into the paint, kind of like when we put moisturizer on dry skin. But even still, we have only so much paint that we, we have that we need to be mindful of it. So I think this is going to have to suffice when we put our ceramic coat on top of it. This will help bring out a little bit more gloss. It will help kind of lock in uh, the sheen and help give us more UV protection to slow this down. Uh, but eventually this will need to be corrected with a respray. We did a paint thickness gauge reading on the vehicle on our roof. Um, obviously we had very, very thin paint. On our hood, we're about three, four mils of paint. That was a respray. Um, the texture, the appearance is completely different than the rest of the vehicle. We have a lot of a solvent pop, a lot of just foggy faded appearance to it. It wasn't the best respray, but we do have a good bit of paint. The biggest issue is that on this paint, we have like two to three, four mils on some of the blue paint, but uniformly around the entire vehicle, our white paint is actually two mils, um, maybe 2.2 at best. We don't see anything over three mils on the white. Because we do have some staining on our white from road film, and we also have a lot of water spotting trauma. You can actually see uh, in the reflection of the light, what looks like faded paint, a lot of it is actually mineral deposits. We have a lot of severe water spots on our side glass, especially on our back glass. We were able to make a dent in the back glass with 3D extra cut compound in a purple wool pad. That's one of the more aggressive measures that I have for correction. It got us to maybe 75% of the water spots being removed. Um, but I can't take that same approach on our paint because I don't have enough to be that aggressive. So after talking with the customer, we're just going to do a one-step polish. More than anything, try to bring back some gloss and shine, but we're not gonna be able to remove all the defects. We're probably not even gonna be able to remove all the water spotting issues. Um, we can try an acid or a chemical, but again, I don't wanna stain or dull the paint. Single stage paint can be a little bit more sensitive to chemicals than two stage clear coat. So our approach is gonna have to be very conservative at this point. So. We're not gonna be able to bring it back to 1989, maybe 2009 at best, but unfortunately, sometimes that's the hand that you are dealt. As a detailer, you gotta kind of roll with the punches. Even though this white paint is scary thin, there was some dirt under the vinyl stickers that has actually dripped down and stained the white paint. I can't remove it with my finger or clay towel treatment. I'm gonna keep this in real time for just a second to show you. I'm basically using my DA like a rotary. I'm just quickly going over the panel just enough to remove that staining, but not enough that I am like doing a heavy correction. Um, it really concerned me that I was gonna burn through. We did remove some white paint, but just very quickly going over the panel, we were safe, able to remove the staining. That was actually the biggest issue that the customer had with the truck. So we were able to correct that for him. Now this is a pad washer. For those of you that have never seen one or worked with one, this is a great way to keep your pads clean. 
especially when working on single stage paint, you're going to have a ton of paint transfer on your pads and that will build up and gum up your pads. So you want to make sure you have clean pads. This also helps keep our pads cool so we're not overly heating the panel. And we're just going to panel by panel, polish, clean, and work our way around the vehicle. Dear Lord Jesus, help me not burn this paint. So I have to be honest with you guys, I had very mixed feelings about polishing this vehicle. I was nervous. I knew that for us to apply the ceramic coating, I needed to try to put some oils back into the paint, just try to, to fix some of the issues, but I couldn't do what we really needed to do on this paint. If the customer had actually asked me, should we polish or should we apply a ceramic coating? I probably would have said, no, let's just apply a good wax and be done with it. But I also know wax wasn't gonna do much to help protect this paint and give it a few extra years before he's ready to paint it. So I had really mixed feelings about doing this, but because the customer wanted it, we are going as carefully as we can over the paint, even our failed clear coat on our metal tailgate, just to try to restore any gloss, remove any defects that we could before we apply the coating. The customer had actually asked me to remove the clear coat off of the metal tailgate. Come to find out it wasn't aluminum because we didn't have black transfer onto our pad. It was more than likely clear coated stainless steel, but I didn't want to end up making bigger issues with sand marks. So we just did a quick polish on the metal and we'll coat it in the future. So we are all done with polishing our truck. Again, not going super heavy. Just doing a quick polish, you can see just how much paint we are removing. And that's going to happen anytime you are polishing single stage paint. That's how you know it's single stage paint when you have that paint transfer. On our white panels, obviously we have white paint transfer on our blue. So that's why we kind of polished one color at a time. So that way I didn't have blue all over my white paint. My OCD is just a little bit happier that way. Um, you can use a pad washer to be able to work clean. You can also use something like Vonix Salt. It's a really great pad cleaner that you just kind of spray, rinse off, use a stiff detailing brush or a pad cleaning brush, rinse under hot water. So for those of you that don't have a pad washer, I know they can be expensive. Salt is a product that I like to use to clean pads kind of on the fly. Um, it works really, really great uh, to deep clean your pads safely. Sometimes if you use the wrong type of detergents, it can actually kind of uh, linger with residue, affect the foam. Uh, so you wanna make sure you're buying something specifically for a pad. I know some people like to use Dawn dish soap. Some people like to use like an all purpose cleaner, super clean, purple power, different things like that. They can work, but they can leave a lot of residue behind, be super strong. So for those that are looking for a great pad cleaner solution, I'll put the link to salt down below. But now we're gonna go ahead and do a panel prep wipe uh, with Payless, remove all of the polishing residue, and then we're gonna go ahead and apply our DIY detail there through your ceramic coating. Now I've already coated the roof uh, because it is actually super big and awkward. I could barely reach it, so I actually had to climb in the tailgate uh, to be able to reach over. The hood is actually two-stage clear coat. That's gonna be how we've done it in every other video. There is clear coat in this paint, so it will function the same. It might not just last as long because more of that is kind of being absorbed. So you might go through a little bit more ceramic coating and it might not last as long just because of the way that the paint is made up. But you can ceramic coat single stage paint. What we're gonna do is demonstrate for you guys what that looks like on this type of vehicle and what the end appearance looks like because I know I'm actually really curious if we can bump up the gloss on this paint. It's not perfect. We've got staining, we've got water spots, we've got a lot of defects on this paint. Unfortunately, we're not able to remove. That's why we're kind of shifting from restoring to preservation. But whenever you're working on an older vehicle, single stage vehicle, uh, just know sometimes you have to go with a more cautious route but you can still get really great results. So we're gonna go ahead, clean our pads, do our panel prep, get ready to apply our ceramic coating. Now we have here the metal coating from DIY Detail. Ideally, this is best suited for kind of raw aluminum. If you have wheels like we have on this truck, this would be a great coating for that type of surface. It's kind of a polished aluminum or raw aluminum. This isn't necessarily aluminum, but it is metal. So we're gonna actually test something out to see if this would work on this type of surface to kind of help fill some of the, the blemishes that's going on. And good golly, if it looks like this when we're done, 
I think the customer's gonna be blown away by that. Oh, I really hope it stays like this. Sometimes when you put stuff like this on and then you level it, it goes back to looking the way it did. Uh, but you actually let this sit on there for two to eight minutes to let it kind of bond. So we're just working this in, in the direction of the grain. And we're gonna be extremely hopeful. <laughs> All that kind of splotchy appearance has for the most part been blended in. It's still there, but it is way, way, way less noticeable. It actually looks years newer. Cause y'all, if this can be a solution for those of you that have a classic Ford with this metal tailgate and the clear coat is failing, if it can just kind of breathe new life into it, better than tire dressing. Cause I know that for a lot of Ford owners that have this type of vehicle where you have the metal, they use tire dressing as kind of a, a temporary fix. But whenever you wash a vehicle, that's gonna go away. And it probably gets super tiring to have to constantly be putting dressings on. So if there's something that's gonna last longer and protect it at the same time, I mean, that's great. So we're gonna come in. It's definitely grabby. I mean, I put it on thick. I can definitely feel a grabbiness to it. We're gonna do this bottom section down here. You can feel like there's something solid that we are leveling. It's kind of sticky feeling. Second towel doesn't feel as grabby. That first towel gets a majority of your transfer solution off. We're just gonna flip to a fresh side. Definitely doesn't have that kind of wet look to it like it did when we first applied it, but it is filling in some of the white splotchy appearance. And I didn't have to wet sand, I didn't have to remove, but it did help fill in that clear coat failure. So at a distance, this is what you're gonna see. So I'm not gonna say womp womp. I was kind of hoping for a little bit more filling in of some of the blemishes. But again, a ceramic coating is not going to restore failed clear coat. And it's not going to be a substitute for failed clear coat. But it will hopefully give this just a, a little bit more of a, a rejuvenated appearance and not look so lackluster when the customer's driving around town. Now we are applying our three-year graphene coating from DIY Detail. This was the first time that I've actually ceramic coated single stage paint. It's not something that you usually do. You can do it. So I was actually applying it the way that I normally apply a ceramic coating. And I've actually realized that there is a different technique when applying ceramic coating to single stage paint. And I'll go over that in just a second, but essentially you want to apply and immediately level. Don't let it flash. So this truck just doesn't want to go out without swinging. I don't know if it's going to pick up on camera. So we are running into a problem on our white paint where when leveling, it's leaving behind ghosting from when we apply the coating. It's not doing that on the blue paint, at least that I can see, but on our white, it definitely being thinner, being a different color, it is reacting differently to our ceramic coating. We're gonna go over how we are fixing that. So you can see we've got that ghosting. We're gonna go through a little bit more product, I think this way, fresh product, okay? I was letting it flash like I typically do. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna actually straight lines, just really massage it in, and then we're gonna immediately level. And it's removing the circular, kind of high spots that we had. And we're just having to go over all of our white. Just kind of make sure we rub it in. 
We're not gonna let it flash off. We already went over it once. So basically I might be reactivating some of the, the old solids, but it's at least giving us an even appearance because that's it's kind of a nightmare waiting to happen. So we actually had to go back over all of the white and repeat this entire process. This coating though did a really good job on our single stage paint. It has a one hour cure time. And for those that say you can't ceramic coat single stage paint, this is what the hydrophobics look like. And this is why we wanted to do this for the customer because it's gonna give them UV protection as well as easier maintenance moving forward. Because the interior has more than likely never been deep cleaned, we're going to do a quick interior detail. We barely had to do any vacuuming, but we definitely wanted to extract our seats. We had 35 years worth of dust in these seats. There really wasn't much staining. I can tell whoever previously owned this meticulously took care of it. But on our older vehicle, we're going to do a quick extraction with some cold water, my Aqua Provac, and even Rip Clean's Carpet Thrasher. This is a solution specially designed for cold water extraction. It did a really nice job at lifting all of the old dirt and just leaving behind a nice fresh scent on the interior. The customer was really happy with how well everything turned out on the interior. For our plastics, we're going to clean, condition, and protect with Swift from PNS. This is a all-in-one product that you can use to maintain your interiors. Has a orange creamsicle scent, really refreshing, but we were able to remove any light dust very easily with this product, but it's not going to dry out the plastics. I'm normally not a huge fan of dressings, but older vehicles especially that uh, have just kind of hard plastic, you do want something that will put down UV protection and maybe dress it a little bit because that's gonna help prevent cracking. Now, you don't want something that's solvent baits because solvents will actually kind of accelerate resoiling and they can actually dry out the plastics. So you want something that's more water-based. What I like about this, we've cleaned. It's not really heavily dirty. This is ideal for like maintenance but we've cleaned and we've dressed simultaneously. So one step for two products, basically. We're gonna actually flip to a dry side and we're just gonna give it a light touch. I'm not a huge fan of high shine dressings. It can actually be a hazard when you're driving, especially on this hard plastic. So this just leaves behind a lightly dressed light matte look it's not satin it's going to give it definitely a dressed appearance but it's not high gloss that it's going to be a hazard when you're driving plus it will be dried to the touch you're not going to have that sticky residue all over it avoid arm rolls avoid those greasy solvent based dressings actually going to gas off and then you're going to end up with a heavy film on your glass if you're noticing your glass is getting really foggy very quickly Oftentimes it's from the dressing that you're choosing. So you want something that's water-based, that's not going to gas off as much like your solvent-based ones. But you can see after it dries, we did our quick touch. I'm not gonna really see a huge difference in appearance from where we dressed and cleaned to where we haven't. So that's the perfect look that I like. So we are finally on the home stretch. We're gonna finish cleaning all of our plastics, get our interior glass cleaned as well with invisible glass and we are all done on the interior. Then we can move on to the cherry on top, which is always our tire dressing. We're gonna use the graphene tire shine from Turtle Wax. This is actually one of my favorite tire dressings. It's going to give you some repellency, helps just keep your tires cleaner longer. It's water-based, so you're not gonna have a ton of sling off or residue stick to the tire. It will be easy to maintain. You can clean with soap and water for the next couple of weeks gives you kind of that perfect look. And then we're going to put a little bit of protection down on our wheels. Because I was noticing some mild water spotting issues, this will just help make it easier to clean moving forward for the customer. Also help maybe put a little bit of protection down to help prevent any sort of chemical staining in the next couple of months. This lasts about four to six months. So a really great maintenance product for wheels. All in all, we are done with cleaning and protecting every surface of this vehicle from the engine to the paint to the glass to the interior the tires and wheels the customer when he came to pick it up was really impressed with how slick the paint felt 
we weren't able to remove every single issue on the vehicle. And he was actually good with that. He preferred that. He said that the character, it gave it life. The flaws sometimes are what give it its beauty. So he was really happy with what we were able to do with this vehicle despite the limitations. So for those of you that maybe you're working on an older vehicle or a classic car, that you're having some issues that you're looking to correct, hopefully me talking to you guys about my experience helps you guys have a little bit of knowledge and to be more confident with your details moving forward. But if you guys enjoy videos like this where we share with you guys our process with detailing, give us a thumbs up and make sure you hit that subscribe and notification bell off to the side because I love to do details with you guys to share with you guys what I'm working on because there's so much that you can learn in every single detail. That's one of the things I love most about detailing. You're constantly learning, being challenged, and having to kind of stretch yourself to see what you're capable of. But obviously the most satisfying is seeing that transformation at the very end. And this one is definitely not lacking in beauty and just that satisfying transformation. So Scott, thank you so much for trusting me with your vehicle. Hopefully you and your kids can make many memories in this truck in the years to come. But thank you guys for watching and we'll see you in the next detail.